Hey everyone, welcome to MT Guitar and to another edition of Pink Floyd Friday. I've been wanting to make a video like this for a while. This is just going to be the start of this idea of how to bend like David Gilmour. The bending, how do, how do you bend? You just push. The wire gets tighter, the pitch goes up. David Gilmour has given some interviews where he's just provided little nuggets and gems of of insight and wisdom that have been very inspirational as a Pink Floyd fan, David Gilmour fan, including he says that in a, you're sort of bending the strings in every note you play in a very, very small way, and it's creating the personality you have as a guitarist, as a musician. I mean, I mean you do it absolutely all the time, a little bit, so that every note, you know, is just the tiniest little things, which is what makes the guitar sort of so personal. You can add a hundred different tiny inflections to, to what you're doing all the time. And that, I guess, is what gives people their individual tone sound. I found that incredibly insightful. I'll leave a link for that interview in the description below. And, you know, David Gilmore is, of course, one of the best benders, string benders in the business, right? Not only with technique, but he is impeccable with technique and intonation, which we're going to talk about. But he's also impeccable with his taste, his, you know, his feeling with it, something almost indescribable. And no one would deny that. His melodicism, his lyricism with his playing is otherworldly. So uh, he demonstrates his abilities on the solos for Wish You Were Here. <laughs> My audience probably plays a lot of acoustic guitar. I do a lot of acoustic guitar lessons. So I thought I would start this series with acoustic to show you how you can bend on an acoustic and really set yourself up for excellent bending on the electric. Because if you can do it on acoustic, you should be able to do it on electric, no problem. I have five techniques, five tips. Just push. The wire gets tighter. That will basically get you going. And we're going to kind of have a practice session at the end of the lesson where I'll just sort of run some, some drills almost, so to speak, that you can throw into your practice routine. You don't have to go crazy with bending. We don't want to hurt our fingers or our hands. So this isn't something you need to do all day. But maybe consistency, right? Do a little bit, um, bit by bit, day by day. Now, Wish You Were Here is a great example of where the acoustic guitar has its limitations. So why don't we start there, just so we know what we're up against. Um, bending is definitely not impossible on acoustic. It's something that I do all the time. So you can work on this with acoustic, but on Wish You Were Here, everything's fine and dandy until he bends on the G string and um, alarm bells go off because we can't really bend the G string. So when he goes, that it's actually a bend and that's an unwound G that he put on just for the studio recording session for Wish You Were Here where they put on an unwound G so he could bend this note up. Now on an acoustic uh, we have wound G so that was a special circumstance that's not common in fact every live performance that I've seen Gilmore is playing a wound G and he's just sliding it like I teach it as well. That's the limitation, is the G string. We can't bend the G string. Okay, now we've gotten that clear. We know we can bend the B and E strings. So I have five techniques that we're gonna briefly cover here. How, how do you bend? You just push. Just to get you aware of what you should focus on when you're bending. First is, what note are you bending to? So if I know that here's a G, here's an A, here's a B. I wanna to bend to the B. So warming up on those two notes, is a good idea. Now, I'm going to bend to that note. See, I was a little flat there. A little sharp. Just on target. So, it's a good ear training technique as well. Hit the note, bend to it. Hear that? Note. Now, with an amp and and sustain, I would have a little bit of a better chance. So this exercise might drive you crazy, but if you can get this right 
with an amp and electric, you'll really be able to nail it. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to support the bend with other fingers. So um, beginners will often try to bend with one finger and it, it's, it's almost impossible. You want to support every bend with the remaining fingers below the frets. So if I'm on 10th fret, I want to put my middle finger on the 9th fret and my index in the 8th and push up with all of them. Okay, get a good grip and really make sure that I'm near the tip, near the nail of the finger on all the fingers so I have the full grip and, and leverage. All right. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to clean up the tone. So I want to mute the other strings. If I just play willy-nilly and just hope it works out, it usually won't because this is a messy business, bending, all right? We're, we're colliding with strings. You're going to put the pick on the string above so that it's not going to make any sound. So if I don't do that, I hear it. Even if it's I'm not a, a big catastrophe, I'm still hearing that string, that G string. So I'm going to pick the note, rest the pick on the G string, and then push up. Now it's nice and clean. Okay? And it's even more important for electric. Um, the next thing is we want to add vibrato or expression, which are kind of similar. If I just bend and that's it, that's one way to go. But I can also give a little wiggle. Now, if we were on lighter strings on an electric, I would even say we can go deeper into the vibrato where we can really bend under the pitch and back up really deliberately. But you're going to break your fingers doing that too much on acoustic. So you just kind of want to give it a wiggle and not worry too much because we, don't, we have very limited time for finger strength to do this. So I'm just going to give it a wiggle and hope it works out, but I really want to make sure I hear the pitch remaining. So maybe wait to vibrato just a split second like this. And then wiggle, okay? All right, the last thing is we want to aim for sustain and clarity through finger placement. This is kind of what I was saying earlier. You want to be right up against the nail, because if I'm just pushing the pads of my fingers away from, you know, in an area away from the nail, it's going to be, it's going to be very hard to get any sustain or clarity. It's going to sound muffled. I'm probably going to have um, less accuracy as well with intonation. So I want to get right up near the nail. It might hurt a little bit more at first with the callus uh, strengthening, but that's, it's worth it. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to have full control. And I'm going to have sustain because my finger is still pushed down against it. So that does it. Um, let's do a little bit of a workout. We're going to do A to B, bend here, three, four, three, four, three, four, vibrato, three, four. Okay, good. Now we're going to go to D to E. It's going to be a little tougher. Three, four, three, four, three, four. Last time. Oof tough, right? Now a half step bend from B to C, 12 to 13th fret, second string. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Last time. Three, four. Last one, we're going to go F sharp to G, 7th to 8th fret. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Last time. Good. Should sound like that. So that'll get you going on a little exercise. We're going to definitely come back to this concept. Just wanted to get you going on, you know, bending on the acoustic is definitely something you can do. This is just G major. Um, you can do any major key. You can do any minor key. So I think that does it. Go ahead, subscribe, hit the bell icon and the thumbs up. We'll see you next time.